TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kickkick.com. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, man, this is the live channel, man. If you do happen to go live, if we do happen to go live or you miss it, this is where any highlights and things of that nature would be. Uh, it's the merch. You get me. <laughs> uh, appreciate all those who have bought and all those who have looked. Um, this is Patreon. We watch things we can't watch on YouTube uh, five days a week, man. Don't forget we about to start September 7th, man. Top boy. We back. <laughs> My bad. Uh, the information for all of that is down in the description below. It's in a link tree. Hit that. And you in there, man. This is the deadliest gang in London. Wood Green Mob. I would not be surprised if other factions have something to say about that. But, you know, this by Sky Boy, man. He's been dropping some bangers lately. This is two days ago. Salute. Let me like. I'm already subbed. Let me turn on my post notification bells because I always tell y'all to do it for me. Got to follow my own advice. Let's get into it. Now, Wood Green is a suburban district in the borough of Harringay in North London. It's a postal district in N22 with parts of it in N8 or N8. Landos. Located in this area of the city is London. If your chicken spot don't got a homeless man outside of it, is it really... Even a chicken spot, you feel me? Of it in N8 or N15, located in this area of the city, is London's deadliest gang. The first generation. That's a W. I don't even gotta go edit my thumbnail. Of the Wood Green firm began to call themselves Junior Mafia or Junior Mafia Woods in the late 1990s, going into the millennium. The second generation became known collectively as Wood Green Mob. Yo, yo, Wood Green, yeah, you get me? Everyone's here, you get me? Mob, that yeah, M-Y-G. Within the mob's sprawling turf covering large parts of the N22 postcode, sets developed that were geographically placed on various estates such as Knoll Park, Acacia Road, Bracknell Close, Progress Way, Commerce Road and Sky City Estate. Following the death of the young Tottenham boy in 1997, Perpetrated by the Hackney Mandem, members of Wood Green Firm were firmly back in the conflict that came to be generalized as Hackney versus Tottenham. At this point, I remember, man, Skyboy, salute to you for starting your channel and making documentaries. I said this a long time ago, or like last year, I said this. If you want to be a YouTube, if you want to get on YouTube and you want to be successful, guaranteed almost, go on and start making documentaries. Period. If you can put that legwork in, if you're good with talking over and know what you're talking about, make documentaries. 100% you're going to get views. <laughs> Got to be on relevant stuff, though. Point in time, Wood Green and Tottenham were close allies. Edmonton were also their allies, which is a stark contrast to what's going on in present time. True. At this new generation, hey, Edmonton went on to become known as Shank Stars, whilst over a dozen Tottenham estates began to adopt their own identity. For example, the formation of MPK, who are from Northumberland Park. Many of the teenagers born into this generation knew each other and attended the same school. Despite this, where they're from proved to be greater than any friendship they had. Areas began to challenge each other's reputation, and it wasn't long before this escalated into violence. In 2002, and it wasn't long before this escalated into violence. In 2002, up to a dozen members of the Wood Green mob, the Junior Mafia Woods, were caught by police surveillance following a four-month robbery spree. The gang members, aged 12 to 19, were said by police to see themselves as untouchable, preying on innocent victims as a pack to steal cash, mobile phones, often at knife point. Jermaine Campbell, Craig Johnson and Ashley Goldie, all then 16, were ordered to be detained for three years despite being young offenders due to the severity of their crime. Michael Gaynor and Aaron Reddix, both age 15, were sentenced to 12 and 18 months. Michael Gaynor's street name, G Money, would later grow up to be a very influential member of the Wood Green Gang. 
robbery offences were said to have fallen by 33% in Wood Green Shopping Centre following these convictions. In 2004, Wood Green mob allies Shadow Kings began the conflict with Tiverton, who are today known as M15 and are from South Tottenham, who at the time had internal issues in Tottenham with Broadwater Farm. During the conflict, Wood Green mob was torn between loyalties with Tottenham and the Shadow Kings. Wood Green mob ended up siding with the Shadow Kings and this was the beginning of the Tottenham beef. Internal disputes were squashed between Tiverton and Broadwater Farm, uniting the whole of Tottenham. In 2005, the Wood Green mob began serious conflict with Tottenham gangs, mainly Broadwater Farm, IDA Bloodstars and Tiverton. I the home of the brave, Bloodstars, do this thing, free Joe, free Now on the 30th of April 2005, six Wood Green mob members would surround the car of Andre Linton on Buller Road just before 11pm, where Jermaine Campbell, aka Killer, would then fire a single bullet through the window and into Andre. chest, the bullet sadly penetrated his heart. Andre, who was a pupil at Craig City Academy and formerly of Northumberland Park School, was not a gang member. It is believed the trigger was something as arbitrary as a dirty look. Killer, real name Jermaine Campbell, was sentenced to 25 years in prison at the the old bailey but five other gang members who were with him at the night are still at large jerome vassell aka warlord was a well-known and loved member of original wood green boys on the 28th of october 2006 our of original Jerome Vassell aka Warlord was a well-known and loved member of original Wood Green Boys. On the 28th of October 2006 at around 1am at the West Indian Cultural Centre, he was shot in the head by Star Gang. Member. Star Gang is the same Tottenham based set that the famous UK drill duo RV and Hedy would later rep. Jerome would be taken to Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead where he spent five months and was discharged in March 2007, suffering from brain damage, partial paralysis and communication problems. He later suffered an epileptic fit directly related to the gunshot injury and collapsed and died at his home in Harringay, December 2007. Eight people were arrested for his murder but none were charged and they were all released. The murder remains unsolved. Now in 2008, many of the Shadow King members were arrested. Those who remained joined Wood Green mob. This was also the start of the Green City Alliance, which is a link up between Wood Green, Edmonton Green and Bounds Green. All three gangs began wearing green bandanas. Some prominent members from different Wood Green sets Included the likes of Todd's, GK, HB, G Money, Nat Nice, Steeler, etc. Also, long term allies Hornsey and Wood Green began to fall into conflict with one another. This reached a tipping point in September 2008 when over 40 Wood Green and Grey Gang members clashed. 17 year old Grey Gang member was rushed to hospital after he was found by a passerby having collapsed in the avenue with stab wounds to his back, leg, and face. The youths who used bandanas to hide their faces were spotted by police officers in the high road Wood Green near the junction with Gladstone Avenue at 1.50am but were able to escape. By the end of 2008, Hornsey's Grey Gang had developed an alliance with Wood Green's rivals from Tottenham including MPK. Wood Green were now effectively with Wood Green's rivals from Tottenham including MPK. Wood Green were now effectively fighting six gangs. Due to this, Wood Green dropped one of the most legendary tracks in UK history titled F.A. Link Up, where the chorus rings, 
Need to get their peas up cause we G'd up And them man there ain't real cause they teamed up Six postcodes linked up just to be fussed The new generation of Wood Green were fearless and mobbing on several blocks. Their best rapper G Money, as well as Sticks, will drop this legendary song in Hornsey on the up block while tying green flags to street signs. Green Gang to my death and Hornsey, murder Hornsey, it's T. Now, in 2010, on the 27th of April, G Money, real name Michael Gaynor, was handed an ASBO by Harringay, which not only bans him from returning to Wood Green, but also prevents him from associating with 13 of his former gangmates. G Money, who has been involved with gangs since he was a teenager, was banned from being in a group of three or more in a public space and has been banned from featuring in any music video or audio material that is uploaded to the internet and incites violence towards rival gangs. He was also banned from uploading pictures. No, I was muted this whole time. So basically, let's just do a recap, man. Um, I believe at this point. The reason I put Lee Jen. That, that's disappointing. The I way the Lamborghini you. is because the fastest way that I found to six figures a month. And You're lying, Killer. sir. Real name Jeff. I said anybody with dreads this thin, you got to watch out for him. Because he's going to take, you know, he's going to be a killer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what else did I say? When he got to, when he got to saying this. Cause we G'd up and them man there ain't real cause they teamed up. Six postcodes linked up. Just to be a, hey, that's, that was hard. He karaoke on this documentary. That's, you know what? Setting you apart. I said, basically, I said, um, I said, uh, I was like, I didn't want to bring up Chicago, but I was like, man, that's how it be, honestly, when you, when you certified in the streets. They can't beat you, so they got to team up to beat you. You know what I'm saying? That That's rules of war anyway. You know? It is what it is. Best rapper G Money as well as sticks to street side. As owns the metal. G Money, real name from returning. G Money. And then this guy, I said, he just put a mask on and switched his name and he could be at anything. Who has been involved with gangs since he was a teenager was banned from being in a group of three or more in a public space and has been banned from featuring in any music video or audio material that is uploaded to the internet and incites violence towards rival gangs. And I said an ASBO is crazy. Imagine like being put out of your home city. Everything is there. Your job, well, I'm, like I said earlier, I don't think gangsters can have nine to fives because your ops can pull up on you at any time. Uh, but like, like, just imagine, like, you got a flat, you paying rent at your flat, you got to break your lease, like, all type of stuff. Like, I, I guess none of that really matters that when you're thugging, that's what I said. All right. Also banned from uploading pictures or footage that features green bandanas. On the 7th of August, 2011, HB, real name Sion Fogger Brown, a Wood Green mob member, would break into HMV shop in High Road in the early hours after rioting that broke out in Tottenham the night before spread across the borough. Brown, unemployed, was identified after blood found at the scene by forensic investigators was matched with him and he was arrested three weeks later. At Wood Green Crown Court, he was sent to- Why did Guardian tell us he was unemployed? Does that really matter? He, he's rioting. I mean, he's, uh, he's, uh, what is he doing? Yeah, he's rioting. So. For 16 months in a Young Offenders Institute after pleading guilty to burglary. 
On the 1st of September 2011, Bienvenue Vangu, aka Steeler, would get the drop on his MPK Ops at Highgate Magistrate Court. Yes, you heard that correctly, an actual court. Many of his fellow Wood Green members would also be attending court for their own cases that day, and it's very common for Ops to run into each other during these things. True, Up to that's true. Teenagers eventually gathered, which sparked a fight, before Steeler wearing a baseball cap and a scarf across his face, arrived clutching a plastic bag containing a rusty axe. Bro, you're at the courthouse. It's full of police. He did not care. Bro did not care. And this is not not uncommon, though. Like, this happens in the uh, courthouse in um, Chicago, too, a lot. Ops there, people get into fights. It's common. Steeler was later arrested and charged. Ironically, he now appeared in court for what he did in court. Mr. Israel told Wood Green Crown Court, one slips to the ground and Steeler hammers four vicious violent hacks of the axe on a young man's head. Steeler then chased another teenager. Hold on, what? Wood Green Crown he now appeared in court for what he did in court. Mr. Israel told Wood Green Crown Court, one slips to the ground and Steeler hammers four vicious violent hacks of the axe on a young man's head. Steeler then chased another teenager across the road and Mr. Israel said stands over him, raises the axe and hits two hard blows on the victim's back. Security guards locked the court to protect members of the public inside but two victims were trapped outside as Vangu launched his attack. Steeler, who turned 18 in November, had a string of 10 convictions already for robbery, violence and carrying a knife and the first appearing before courts when he was just 14. Steeler admitted wounding, attempted wounding, violent disorder, and possession of an axe. Attempted wounding? Bro axed somebody to the head four times and, and they call it that attempted wounding? Shout out to the UK just judicial system, man. You want to go? Hey, I ain't even gonna say. I don't condone any of this. You do. He was sentenced to six years and ordered to be on license for four years after his release from prison to protect the public. From that day onward, Steeler became known as Axeman. Now, Nat Nice, real name Nat Neil, testified was a Wood Green mob member. He was banned from Wood Green, so he started chilling with Edmonton-based set them Africans who were part of the Green Alliance. Them Africans local rivals at the time were Get Money Gang. On the evening of April 1st, 2013, Nat Nice and a group of them Africans gathered on Bouncers Road in Edmonton. A dark Vauxhall Corsa drove past. GMG members Chicken and Shadow were behind the wheel. Nat Nice and friends spotted the car and gave chase. Nat Nice then left and returned with a gym bag containing a sawn off shotgun and some ammunition. 10 minutes later, a black BMW arrived. Chicken and Shadow stepped out and started walking towards the kebab shop in Bouncers Road. Nat Nice calmly put his bag down after spotting him and proceeded to fire at Chicken who was unarmed before chasing him down and firing again. Chicken who had been hit in the chest collapsed in the alleyway between Bouncers Road and the car park. Chicken sadly oh, died in the scene. Nat Nice was arrested, charged and sentenced to 27, 27 years, years for his murder. Money J, real name Joshua Folks, was a 197 member, which is a gang located in Finchley and rivals of Wood Green. On the 3rd of December 2014, Money J was outside the house in Palmer's Green at around 12.45 a.m. He would be spotted by two Wood Green members, one being G Maz as well as Big J. Big J would hit him with a baseball bat, whereas G Maz would take things further and stab Money J in the chest. Money J would collapse and despite paramedics later working on him for almost 45 minutes, he was pronounced dead at the scene. The three teenagers responsible for his murder will be charged and go to trial. Three teenagers have been found not guilty of murdering a 17-year-old. I'm not gonna lie, it's a W documentary. It goes into good detail. I'm pretty sure it's fact-checked. We got clips, we got... We, we, every time a gang come up, we see what bandana color they are. Outside his friend's home in North London, Joshua Folks, who was known as Money J, was stabbed to death in Palmer's Green in December. How they beat the case is beyond me. But they did it? things have happened. Steeler was released in 2014, but it didn't take long for him to get into trouble. 
Nakrima, real name Clive Massey, was a refugee from Congo whose parents came here for a better life. In his teenage years, he was a legit Grey Gang member and extremely active, arguably their top scorer, on one occasion stabbing a shooting Wood Green member, GK. However, as he aged, he had been trying to extricate himself from a deadly lifestyle and qualify as an engineer to make Impossible. Impossible. If you're a gangster with bodies, you're not going to just, just step away. Because the, the, the people who lost, the people who were connected to those bodies, who their loved ones, their friends, their other members, they're never going to forget that. That's the stuff you got to think about before you, before you be down in the gangs and get your stripes and do this, this, and the third. Make his family proud. It was Make his family proud. It's too late, buddy. It's not too late, but you got to move. You got to switch. Like, you got to completely relocate. The honorable decision on his part. Sadly, his ops will continue to see him as a target yeah. for all the blood he had shed prior. Now, on the 1st of February, 2015. Like, you could be like... Like, he said he was super active. You can't be top scorer and try to, you know what I'm saying, get up out of there. Like, no, you're top scorer. You're forever. You're forever hunted. You're forever wanted. And I don't condone it, you two. I'm just saying. Crime up prior. Now, on the 1st of February, 2015, Crime up arrived with four friends at a birthday party in Sark Tower. At around 4.20 a.m., present at the party was Steeler, HB, and a few others. Once spotted by HB, Crimer was shot in the chest before he made it beyond the hallway of the 13th floor flat. Two friends tried to drive Clive Massey, 24, to hospital following the shooting at 4.30 a.m., but flagged down a police car on his way to the scene when they realized he was unlikely to survive. He unfortunately died in hospital the following morning. A total of 21 people arrested in connection with the murder. Everyone but HB was released. HB now stood trial for the murder of Clive Massey. The prosecution stated that within a minute, the deceased and his groups were chased down by HB and his associates, and there was a further gunfight outside a block of flats where bullets hit Mr. Massey's car. The prosecution ballistic expert stated that at least three up to five firearms were discharged. It was alleged that the shooting was gang related. They hate speed. I've been shot at before, man. Eight bullets hit the car. It was crazy because they were all around me, but not me. They didn't hit me. One hit like the, you know, so I'm the driver. We're on the left side on our side or whatever. I'm the driver. Nobody else is in the car. It hit right above. So the glass, the windshield, and then there's car above. It hit like right here. It hit the headlight in front of me like right above the headlight and the engine stopped it uh it hit the side door but like right behind my me and then it hit like you know my daughter's car seat was in the car it hit my daughter's car seat it's just a lot man thank god i'm alive man he had a higher calling for me if he wanted to get me on here and tell my stories and tell y'all to stay away man it don't be worth it but you know what I'm saying? I'd be a hypocrite to tell you, you know what I'm saying? To not do what you got to do, but also just, you know, stay safe at the same time. Stay as safe as you possibly can. And if by staying safe, you got to stay dangerous, then so be it. But just know what come with it. Have some money put away just in case they got to bury you. Don't put that burial bill on your parents. It's expensive. He denied this as well as denying being a gang member. HP was found guilty of possession of a firearm and violent disorder, but not found guilty of murder. On the 9th of January 2015, Prophet, real name Isaiah Ekpaloba, an N15 gang member, along with his friend Lamont Roper, would raid the home of Wood Green rival JD, attempting to rob him for drugs. JD managed to fight back while sustaining stab injuries. He was also able to stab Prophet. The pair then ran out of the house. 100% JD do not look like he going for none of that. <laughs> look at this dude. He do not look like he... If he's too broken in your house, and this was the house that was being breaking into, like... Injuries. You're gonna fight. <clears throat> also able to stab profit. The pair then ran out of the house, 
JD pursued the pair and caught up with them as the cab attempted to pull out into that high road in Wood Green. CCTV showed JD armed with at least one knife open the front passenger door and make stabbing motion towards Roper who was seated there. JD then attempted to open the back passenger door where Prophet was seated but only managed to open it partially. The car took Prophet to North Middlesex Hospital in Edmonton where he died at 4.46pm. Police later found JD covered in blood inside his own flat. Officers recovered a number of knives, one which had the blade been... He only got 12 years, man, because at a certain point, like, it was, like, self-defense. But if he would have just left it alone, like, he was still alive, you good, let them go. Like, he would have got away no years, probably. Because at the end of the day, you got knives in your crib. Kitchen knives. But it sound like they sound found more than just kitchen knives. Snapped off, indicating the fruit. Officers recovered a number of knives, one which had the blade been snapped off, indicating the ferociousness yeah. of the struggle. Officers arrested Roper 18 of Wigan House in East London on January 14th, and he was subsequently charged with conspiracy to rob Dorset. He was tried alongside Dorset and found guilty. Considering the circumstances, JD was sentenced to a life of minimum 12 years for the murder of Prophet. Yeah, yeah. This guy, the 12 year, what's his name? JD was sent to. JD, like RIP to all parties involved who did not make it, but JD was warranted to do what he had to do to protect himself inside of his home. So. To a life of minimum 12 years for the murder. 12 years? Probably do what? 12? Because <laughs> it's a minimum of 12. No profit. Roper was sentenced to seven and a half years for conspiracy to rob and three and a half years for both counts of robbery. Both to be served concurrently. Okay, correct. Now, Mello was an original Wood Green member. He was highly respected. On the 25th of June 2015, Mello was at a party in Abbey Wood, South East London, celebrating becoming a father to his second child. His brother Rico was also present, and he was celebrating the fact he bagged a new job. Present, unfortunately, were also MPK members Fraser and Aiden. I tell y'all, man, stop going to house parties, bro. Stop even celebrating anything in your career where it's just like an open invite. Like, no. Go to a hookah lounge or go go to a bar. Like, go go to the, go somewhere with security. You ain't too tough to have security around you. You know, they're going to do their job. Period. You got a better chance of a security guard stopping what's going on than you being at a house party and no security guards, your homeboys. Because you got to think about it. Half of your homeboys is going to run. So if you come with two people, at least one of them is running. And then it's just you and your other homeboy. Like, come on, man. Be smarter than this. Things escalated and three men were knifed after a fight erupted. Mello was one of the three men stabbed. He was taken to an East London hospital where he died from a single stab wound. Damien Fraser, one. 27, from Summerfield Grove, Tottenham, was jailed for 21 years. And Aiden, 25, of Northumberland Park, Tottenham, was jailed for 19, 19 years. years. On the 3rd of February 2018, Wood Green gang members went out riding looking for rivals in a stolen black Honda Civic. They spotted Coabner Nelson, known to friends as Kobe, who was now a youth care Kobe. worker, but once ripped the MP. Dang, man, I'm still hearing about Kobe. I, I've been hearing about Kobe since I started doing reactions. K gang. Kobe himself was in a car. They rammed into him. Shortly after the collision, a group of men decamped from the Black Honda Civic, ran to where Kobe's car had come to arrest, and began to attack the car, and then him. They started hitting him, kicking him, knifing him down. Kobe was on his feet, then fell down on the ground and curled up. Kobe mustered his strength to call for an ambulance. Where are you, mate? Jack Mary's close. Jack Mary. I'm dead. The Mary's oh. where? I'm dead. Tell me oh. where you are. That's crazy, bro. Every time I hear this, like, he really felt the life leaving his body. It was telling this dude, talking about some mate. Man, stop mating me and send me an ambulance. Oh. Hello? 
Are you with him now? Yes. Are the attackers still nearby? Oh, no, he's right yes. there. He wipes out. Okay, is there any serious bleeding? Yes. Kobe sadly died. I never heard that much of it. The scene shortly before 3 a.m. What do you mean, man? I don't even know what's happening to my son again. <laughs> Told you. What did I tell you though? What did I tell you earlier in this video? If you're involved, if you're a gangster, you can't have a nine to five. If you got ops, you really can't have a nine to five. It's over with. You a social worker, you too exposed. Got you. R.I.P. though. Young S, however, beat the case. As the funeral procession heads to the cemetery, a few streets away, the police spot a suspicious car with three suspected gang members in it. A few streets away, the police spot a suspicious car with three suspected gang members in it. Kobe did something. Kobe was heavily involved because not only did they take him out, they, they was coming to ride at the funeral too? That means you was heavily involved. which fails to stop. I confirm this vehicle has been uh, shown as confirmed. It's certainly far off over. The three men attempt to escape. I'm sorry. It's confirmed. It's certainly far off over. The three men. Who is this man think he was catching? Who? Attempts to escape. <laughs> he was running in slow motion. Uh... Come on. Gape. One suspect is caught at an address close by, and when officers search the property, they find a loaded shotgun. Gun that we've recovered from the address. Um, it's a sawn off shotgun, so it's got a potential to kind of spread pellets. The arrested suspect was found not guilty of any offense. Now Jigga J, real name, Neron Quarte, a Wood Green gang member, DNA was found on the car's airbag, but throughout the investigation- You know what, I'm not, like I'm watching this and I'm, it's like it's it's becoming clear to me. Like, I, I, I understand why people take that much risk in the UK because look at the prison, like you, you're more likely to get away because of the judicial system out there. Like he got away. Y'all found a loaded shotgun and he got away. Salute. But I'm just saying, man. Investigation and trial, he refused to give up names of the other men involved in the attack. Real one? Him keeping his mouth sealed was the reason why the rest of the members involved didn't get locked. Judge and sentenced Quarty to life of minimum term of 26 years. Now back to Steeler. On the 20th of February 2018, Steeler was on a ha I hope his gang sent him money on his books every week. But no problem. He better have everything that's needed. Jigga J better have everything that's needed while he in pen. Everything. Thomas Smith and City Train to Boston. On the 20th of February 2018, Steeler was on a Hammersmith and City Train to Barking. He was spotted and approached by an op. This turned into a verbal fight before it quickly escalated and got violent. Steeler was stabbed and reacted by shooting his attacker at close range in the stomach. Steeler was heavily bleeding himself. However, his attacker collapsed on the floor and was left in critical condition. Steeler then ran off the train at Barking Station. Three days later, Steeler was traced to his home in South End and arrested after a standoff with armed police. The boy he shot recovered in hospital. Steeler appeared at the Old Bailey in London and was found guilty of grievous bodily harm with intent and possession of a firearm. He was cleared of one count of attempted murder. He was sentenced on the fourth. Yeah, I would I would assume he would get away with the AM because that was self defense. But having like in like in Chicago, if you're not supposed to have a pipe and you get and you get into it and you use it in self defense, the only charge you're gonna get is for the pipe. <laughs> From September to 13 years in jail, where he will serve a further four on license. Now, Lamps was a member of a set in Wood Green known as the Greenside Hitters, a very active Wood Green member for his age. 
would literally terrorize his ops and was alleged to have been part of the group who attacked Kobe. See, Kobe was a love member. I remember the story of Lamps. By the whole of Tottenham. OFP, N15 and MPK were all mourning his death. On the 8th of March 2018, Lamps was outside and would taught his ops on Snapchat by playing hit Toronto song from K Money titled Come Outside. Which is a song that taunts rivals about staying indoors instead of coming outside to gangbang. How does it go? Unfortunately for Lamps, his ops would accept his proposal. Now at 12.30 a.m., two individuals on a moped circled View Cinema. Oh, this is the movie theater, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had precise aim. Allegedly. Where Lamps was at. After shooting once, there was commotion inside the cinema. But this didn't phase Lamps. Instead, he charged to the door where they were at. As he tried to open the door, one bullet was fired that hit him in the head. And he immediately dropped. Lamps was declared dead at a hospital two hours later. That was stupid. I ain't even lie, Lamps. That was dumb. R.M.P. Lamps, but that was dumb. Whatever you just did to prove what point. 2018 was an extremely hot year for North London. But I tried to not pause this. First of all, there's a lot going on. This officer is bad. I don't know if y'all can see this. She is nice. And whoever this is, salute. Salute. <laughs> you feel me? But it didn't look like things were slowing down. Now, Tanisha Melbourne Blake, also known as Nisha, was a girl who was heavily affiliated with Tottenham sets, such as MPK, OFB, and N15. Assuming she is of age. A very young Nisha was even in the music video by Tottenham Olders in 2010. Now, on the 2nd of April 2010, that wasn't her. Almost a month after. That's her? Now, on the she was even in the music video nah, that's, Tottenham nah. team. almost a month after the death of Lamps Wood Green members went out riding where they spotted MPK members Nisha was spotted in Chargrove Road socialising with friends she was shot from a vehicle shortly before 9.35pm sadly Tanisha died at the scene I remember her story the too remains unsolved. now Wood Green member BD later dropped a song mocking the ordeal of Nisha's death sarcastically saying R.I.P. to her while claiming he steals chills with a shooter. K1, real name Kamali, was a big time trapper and highly loved member in Wood Green. Now on the 21st of February 2019, MPK members were planning to go on a drill and convinced a few OFB members to aid them. MPK purchased a stolen Peugeot 308 where they had a fresh pair of clothes inside of it waiting for them after the drill. It was parked in Broadwater Farm. I On remember the 22nd this. of February 2019, six MPK members and one OFB member, being SJ, went on a lurk looking for ops in Wood Green on their pedal pipes. Upon reaching View Cinema... Who let SJ go outside like this? Bro, you was the, the ticket. A common location for Wood Green members to hang out, as well as where Lamps was shot dead. They spotted K1, Y Dot and Swift. A MPK member known as Shems instantly shot at the Wood Green members, missing them, causing them to split apart and run. The six members were then caught on CCTV, chasing the direction of K1 and Swift. The gang then caught up to Swift, who was cornered on Vincent Road. Shems then shot Swift in his bum, where he had been stabbed eight times by Trills. K1 was further ahead and made it to his car. Now in an act of pure loyalty and bravery. Yeah, I remember this too. K1 attempted to ram his car into a gang in an attempt to help his friend Swift. However, he got stuck between cars, leaving him as a sitting duck. Trill sneaked. Yeah, you was trying to help your mans and all that bravery, then look where it got you. Pinned up Zen like this. Osa turned their attention to him. K1 left the car where he and Swift made it into coffee and cream hairdressers where they barricaded the door. The MPK members booted down the door and stabbed K1 numerous times in front of women and children, leaving him to die. They then pedaled back to Tottenham to change their clothes. Chill's pedal bike broke down, so he attempted to walk, but he was spotted by police. Chill's real name Tyrell Gray. How your pedal bike break down? What, the chain broke or something? What you, what you got going on? How you gonna come outside doing missions with a rusty pedal bike? Come on, bro. Was sentenced to 25 years minimum. Now youths Jaden, Shane Leons, 
and OJ Hamilton were also found guilty of K1's murder and GBH with intent in relation to a second man. The judge had lifted reporting restrictions that stopped them from being named. They were all sentenced to life imprisonment and to serve a minimum of 21 years. And as for Shem's real name, Shereem Kukhon, he was also found guilty of a possession of a firearm with intent. He was sentenced to serve a minimum of 28 years. Sadly, as I was making this video, another body got dropped in Finchley, North London on the 7th of August 2023. The victim, age 18, was stabbed in Regis Park Road near the junction of Litchfield Grove I'm keep and it. managed to flee to a Sainsbury Super. I'm going to keep it 1,000 with you. If somebody could... Somebody could get bang, 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 bang right in front of me. I'm not stopping. I'm not me. I'm not stopping. Because I know what this is. Bro, they could spin the block and think I'm his homie. Trying to resuscitate him. Trying to be a good guy and resuscitate him. And then boom, I'm, I, they think I'm your homie. Like, I'm not. I can't do this type stuff. Be shook me. This is not me, sir. This guy, I'm not doing it. He could do it because he don't look the part. Me, I look like, <laughs> no, nah, I look like I could be his homie or something. Like, uh -uh. 2023, the victim. Rule of thumb, if you see somebody get downed and you look at him and you look like you could be his homie, just go ahead and keep walking because they might spin again and you might become another victim. Just keep on going. AJ Ian was stabbed in Regis Park Road near the junction with Litchfield Grove, but managed to flee to a Sainsbury supermarket after being attacked at 9.40 p.m. All right, Peter. Yeah. Wood Green members YK and Taps were immediately arrested for the murder. Mm -hmm. Now this brings me to the end of Wood Green's history of nothing but murder, jail, and misery. No doubt, London's deadliest gang. I Facts, I ain't hear nothing positive. <laughs> All that negativity. Negativity begets negativity. If, you, if you're if doing negativity and you're expecting positivity out of it, just... You'll be hustling backwards. Send my condolences to the family of everyone I mentioned. Facts. Make R. sure R. to subscribe and hit that like button as it goes along. I've already done that, man. See, I'll leave a like, comment. Let me know what y'all think. I'm gone.